Hey everybody, sorry about the, the technical difficulty we had. Uh, we lost connection for a little bit, but we're back. We're still here. Um, so where were we? Ah, yes, we were painting with cinnamon. That's right. So we're painting with cinnamon. And how did it come out? Well, we applied it to some glue. And look at that color. We have a nice yellow, kind of a reddish orange almost with the cayenne. The yellow is the turmeric and the brown is the cinnamon. So you got some nice earthy tones there and a really beautiful yellow. Um, so let's try using some of the makeup. We also have, <clears throat> I was informed that this is uh, eyeshadow. So that's eyeshadow. Look at all these. We have um, metallic colors here. This is a well-used palette. Um, we have some more brilliant colors and even a mirror. You could do a self-portrait, which is, you know. Uh, and, ooh, look at these brilliant colors. So what we're gonna do with these, we're gonna try to chip some off because these are powders. So we're gonna try to chip some off onto our palette and make some paint. Um, so let's try to do that. I'm gonna grab a new palette here. And I want a blue. I want to make a nice blue. So uh, I'm going to take the back of my brush, or I have an X-Acto knife actually, which would be good. But if you don't, you could use like a fork or something. Just use the, you could use the back of your brush um, and just scrape it, scrape some of the paint off, just scrape it off onto a palette. So I'm going to do that. I have to hold it up. So I'm going to do it on the floor here and I'll show you guys. Just give me one second. Uh, I'm going to scrape this blue. It's a really beautiful blue. I'm just kind of, you know, I don't even think you need too much, just a little bit because this is such a strong, fine powder. I think it's going to do really nice with the glue. So here it is there. Um, I just scraped it off with the knife. So let's add our glue to the blue, see what happens. I'm going to make just a little bit for now just a little bit like that. And I'll take a brand new brush and let's mix it up. If you don't have a brush, you could use a toothbrush. Um, you can use the little makeup felt pen that comes with the thing if your mom or sister or whoever will let you. But look what's happening, guys. That's such a beautiful color. I'm actually really, really impressed with how this makeup is, is working with this glue. Um, I think this is gonna make a nice paint. Let's try it. I'm gonna paint it, uh, I'm gonna paint it over here. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Uh, that's nice. And so making these little swatches of colors, especially if you have like a sketchbook, uh, making little swatches of colors, just showing you what you can do. Now, I wonder if I add even more blue, if it will be even more intense. Let's try. And now I do know that if we scrape another type of blue or another color into it, it will affect how the color looks. So you can mix with all these colors. You have infinite colors that you can make with this palette alone. So um, hopefully you have someone in your family that will let you use an old makeup palette. Uh, let's actually try uh, one of these metallic colors. I want to see what that looks like. So let's see what this metallic color looks like. I'm going to do this um, kind of a copper color. Oh, wait, they have this gold. I want to do the copper. Scrape that down on there. I'll show you guys what it looks like here in just a second. All right, so there it is. Now let's add some glue. it shining maybe it's kind of brown on the camera but it's actually a copper tone so let's get a new brush mix it up oh and well when it mixes with the glue it loses a little bit of its luster but it still has those glitter pigments in there and it's still gonna catch the light. So it's still kind of shiny. 
you guys see? So I'm gonna see what that looks like. Let's paint it right here. And it's coming out uh, a dark brown, but a very shiny dark brown. So that's really cool. That would make for a nice skin tone as well. All right, let's try a little more vibrant color. Um, let's do a green. So I'm gonna take this palette, scrape off a little bit more green onto here. Let's see what that does. I like this green here. Just a little bit will do. I'm gonna do it in the corner here. You can see it on my palette right there. And a little bit of blue flakes got in there. So it's kind of gonna have a blue tint, I'm thinking. Another brush. And let's see what that does. Now you'll have to work on your ratio of glue to pigment to really get the color you want. Can you guys see that very well? Yeah, that's a nice green. Let's try it on the paper. It's deep, comes out a deeper green. And if you apply it thick, it's a lot more opaque. Otherwise, if you thinly apply it, then it's transparent. So let's kind of, if you smudge it, you can kind of see what it does. Nice. All right. So I'm gonna try the lipstick a little bit and maybe some of the nail polish. We're experimenting, guys. This is what it's all about. All right, so here's some of the purple. Let's see what that feels like. Oh, that's. It's like drawing with an oil pastel and you don't have to push hard at all and it blends just like an oil pastel. It's even softer than an oil pastel. Um, and it works very similarly. I'm impressed. Okay, I wanna try one more lipstick and then we'll move to the nail polish. So this is kind of a more lighter tone. Try it right here. That's a great color. These are very vibrant colors. And they're perfect for even drawing with. You could draw with that. Nice, and they blend really well. Okay. Ooh, what's this? I don't even know what this is, but it's shiny. I'm told this is eyeshadow. All right, so let's scrape off some of this eyeshadow. Oh, this is a gel. <laughs> I'm learning new things here, guys. All right, so let's see what that does. I'm gonna, I guess this is like a lip gloss type of thing. Um, seems like it, shiny. And I'm gonna, this would be like an interesting glitter glow effect over the top of a color. Yeah, see, I can add it to the top of that purple and it makes it shiny. That's kind of cool. All right, so what do we got here? Let's do some. What is this? This is nail polish and it comes with its own brush and it smells strong. It's a nail polish. It smells like enamel paint. It, I think it is enamel paint. So be, so be careful. It's kind of in a gel form. So it's nice and thick and that is a beautiful color. I'm going to bring that in closer so you guys can see. Um, be careful because, you know, I think this stuff is toxic, but it makes for a Beautiful color. And let's see if we can get the light really shining on that good. Yeah, you can see. All right, so this is a lot of fun actually. I like experimenting and figuring out new ways to make art. I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as me. All right, so what is this? This is lip gloss, blue lip gloss. Very cool. Um, let's try it out. 
that's a nice deep blue. Um, that's kind of fun. And it has its own little drawing tool. So you could really draw with this. That'd be kind of fun to draw with. Yeah, you could really draw with that. I might come back to this. All right, so let's try out another nail polish. This one is uh, glittery and blue. And I'm thinking these would make, this might be a little more transparent, but let's find out. Ooh, no, it's, it's pretty thick. Oh, but you can get some transparent effects with it if you scrape it out. That's really nice. And I wonder how it looks if you blend over the top of another, yeah, as you're picking up the color from underneath it and it adds a brilliant glitter effect to it. So that's really cool with the little blue sheen. So I'm gonna come in there and show you guys if I add it to the red, ooh, it almost looks golden. Wow, this is fun. Let's see. Can you guys see the shine? Yeah, beautiful. Nail polish, great, great uh, supply to get your hands on if you can. Um, all right, so now we've really kind of tried out all our paint. Oh, we have this one. I forgot about the body paint. Let's try out the body paint. We have a full palette here of body paint. Um, it's kind of like makeup, basically. Um, so let's get a new brush and try out some of these colors. And let's see, these feel, kind, these are kind of hard, but they're, oh, they're soft, they're creamy. So these are gonna feel maybe, I'm thinking like oil paint. Uh, I'm gonna try this bright red here. Very beautiful, vibrant color. And wow, a little bit goes a long way with this. You can really cover a lot with it because it's so smooth. And this would be amazing to blend with. So this is actually a lot of fun. All right, so let's see if we can turn our color swatches into a work of art now. So I have all my colors, um, I have brushes. Let's see what we can turn this into. Um, I was drawing with this tool, this eyeshadow tool or lip eyeshadow, yeah, lip gloss. This is lip gloss. Okay, so we were drawing with this and I was having fun with that. So let's try some more. Um, I'm feeling inspired by David Cho today, looking at his artwork. So with that in mind, I'm going to make a David Cho work of art. All right, here we go. Let's start. I'm starting with the eyes. And now these eyes, I guess it's fairly fitting that I start with eyes using the eyeshadow tool. Now I drew my eyes stylized, almost like the flame of a candle. Notice how I drew them equal. If they're not equal, they'll look off and they'll look different. So I drew them equal. Now I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna draw a little ball of a nose and I'm gonna kind of eyeball it, but in my mind, I'm thinking this is where the forehead is. This is the eye line right here. And down here, I know is going to be the nose line. And then if I take this same amount of space and bring it down here, that's where the mouth goes right there, okay? So you can visualize those marks in your mind and then you don't have to draw the guidelines like how we did before, right? So you can save yourself a step. If you need help, if the guidelines help, by all means use them because even I still use those today. If you don't use them, sometimes you can end up being confused. So once you get to the point where you can visualize the guidelines in your mind, then you don't need to draw them anymore. So, but in order to do that, you have to draw it enough so that you can see it. So that's what art is really all about. It's learning to see in different ways. All right, so I'm drawing a David Cho inspired piece. I'm gonna move down to the nose here and I'm drawing the nose. And so these are the nostrils here on the left and the right. And then this is the shadow of the nose. And notice how I'm starting sketchy. I'm not worried too much about 
what it's going to end up looking like, right? I'm just kind of going with the flow and just seeing what happens. And I know how to draw a face because I've done it so many times. But if you follow the previous uh, two weeks ago, we did the face lesson. So if you follow that, if you go back in the archives, uh, Jamaica Center for Arts and Learning archives, on the YouTube video, you can watch that lesson about how to draw the face. And last week we learned how to draw the body. And once you memorize the anatomy and the shapes and uh, proportions needed to create a, a normal looking human, then you can forget them and start drawing from your mind and just let it happen. Let the, let what's, what you've learned before guide you. All right, so I shading the bottom of the nose here. I drew the nostrils. Now I'm going to maybe indicate the bridge of a nose here. Some eyebrows. Okay. Ooh, I love how this blue is looking. All right. And I'm going to add the lips. So the lips I can visualize. I know that the top one will start somewhere in here. And then I'm going to, and I know from proportion from two weeks ago that if we are three weeks, if we draw a line straight down from the middle of the eye, that will find the width of the mouth. And this is the mouth line here. So if I connect this, and I'll put a shadow there in the middle to this, now I have my top lip. All right, and so I'm curving it towards the corners, adding a little shadow in the corner here, adding a shadow on the middle of the lip, bringing it over. Now I need to draw the bottom lip. So the bottom lip is really just a curve going from end to end. Oops, I lost, I lost my tool, it broke. So what I'm going to have to do now is use a brush. No problem. All right, so dip my brush in there. There we go. Now I'm going to paint the bottom lip. Well, I must say that that drawing tool that came with this eyeshadow was actually really nice. This brush doesn't work as well. Oop, there we go. Now I got a lot of paint. Okay. So I'm shading the bottom lip and I'm going to switch to a new color. I'm going to switch to a new tool. Um, and I'm going to use some of the blue that I made with my glue. All right, so I'll take my brush, take my blue glue. Ooh, it's starting to dry already. It dries pretty quick. Let's see how that looks. Oh yeah, that goes really nicely with it. Okay, so I'm gonna make these long eyelashes. A little more shading on the nose. And now this blue glue is a little bit lighter. So I can use that to my advantage when I start to kind of add some shading. I'm gonna add, it almost looks like her eyes are closed. So I'm gonna bring it down like this. Add a little bit more shadow underneath her eyes. All right. So once I lay down this foundation of the face, uh, her chin will be here. And why am I? And I'm just going to bring that up and around. Maybe something sharp like that. Okay. Now it's, I'm going to start adding some new colors. Yeah, that's good. You just make them lines until you find the right one. And just don't worry about making a sketchy mess. Sometimes those lines that you make when you're figuring things out um, will turn into something significant. So don't erase them right away. You can always add more paint and paint over the what you've done. All right, so I'm gonna try to incorporate these colors in here a little bit. I'm going to make maybe turn that into like a headdress or some hair. I'm not sure yet. But what I am sure of is that I'm going to try out 
this makeup on the face. So I'm gonna try out this lipstick for some shading. Um, so let's start, actually I wanna start with the darker color. Start with the darker color lipstick and I'll work my way to the light. All right, so we have here, you have to be careful when using this because uh, a hard push will break it. So you have to be very light. Um, I think I'm gonna start with the lips. Why not? Oh, see already it broke. <laughs> but that's okay, I'll just use my fingers. So it's hard to do it with your fingers, um, but it's doing it. Use this lipstick now. Oops, this one. I'm going to do this lightly colored lipstick from the bottom. That is a perfect color for a lip. I'm going to actually shade the top of her lip to add a little highlight and blend it in. All right. So if you have a Q-tip, you could use a Q-tip to dip it on your lipstick like this. And then you can rub it on the canvas like that. So those lips look pretty good. I feel like I need a yellow color. Oh, yellow is calling my name. And yellow is one of those colors that I use a lot. Um, it's one of my favorite colors. And I feel like it's a universal color. Like it just goes with everything. Um, all right, so let's, let's use our turmeric. Where did that go? We need to make a new batch. New batch of turmeric. I'm gonna get that. I wanna see what this yellow is gonna do for the face. All right, so I'll put a little bit more on this time. And instead of using the white glue, I'm gonna use the glitter glue. So you can see here in the middle, that's my glitter glue pile. I have to open it up to get it out. Glitter glue in the turmeric, turmeric, however you say it. That should be good. So there's a little bit of a red tint to that. Um, now I'll get a new brush, a bigger brush, mix it in. Let's see what happens. Now it's first, it's gonna roll around, but then it's gonna finally start mixing. And wow, that got really thick. I think I need maybe a little more glue. Just a little bit. And the red of the red glitter glue um, didn't really color it that much. Um, but just a little. Okay, the more I added, now it's starting to affect it a little bit more. All right, and that's kind of glooping up on my brush, but you just wipe it down like that. And I have a lot of paint on my brush, so I'm gonna use it for the face. So let's see what happens. Painting with spices. So this is some spicy art right here. I don't think you've ever seen such a spicy work of art before. And I really do like this color. And notice how I'm adding my brush marks. I'm moving my brush as if I was sculpting my face. See how I'm curving it around the forehead, around the eyes, around the nose. If you feel your face, you can feel those curves. And if you feel those curves, you can paint them. So just feel your face, feel a face, Get a feeling for the face <laughs> and try to paint with that same feeling. 
the same goes with everything. If you wanna paint a tree, you have to kind of study the tree, right? You have to get to know it. And that's what art does. That's what drawing does. It helps us get to know things. And the better we get to know things, well, the better our world will be. Because life is all about relationships and developing relationships, first and foremost, with yourself. And a great way to get to know yourself is through painting and drawing, because then you learn what your interests are and what fascinates you. And whatever fascinates you, well, that's what you can make. That's what you can learn. And that's what you should develop. So if you like drawing cars, draw some cars. If you like drawing animals, draw animals. If you like drawing faces, well, you came to the right place. All right, so I'm just covering this face with my turmeric paint and I'm just getting a nice even coat and notice how I was moving my brush in the direction of the curvature of the face. Um, if you're painting the tree, you want to move the way the light moves, right? So you want to mimic the texture or the movement of whatever it is that you're painting or drawing. All right, so I'm nearing the end of my turmeric paint. I'm going to squeeze the last bit on there. It ended right at the perfect time. And it's already starting to dry. I can move it around a little bit, which means I can blend slightly too. All right, I'm going to just real quick scrape some ears on there. I'm going to, her head is down a little bit, so I'm going to paint her ears up here. And remember, the ears go from the eye line down to the nose line. But since it curves, these ears are going to be back a little bit, right? Because if we imagine the guidelines, the curvature of the face, these ears are going to come back here. All right. So now I'm going to come back to my cinnamon paint because I like the spice painting. I like where it's going. And my cinnamon gave me a really beautiful brown. And where did my cinnamon go? Um, lost my cinnamon, but that's all right. I have a little bit right here. So I'm just going to pour some more on my tray and see that. That's the cinnamon. Now I'm going to add my uh, glitter glue again. Why am I doing the glitter? That's what I'm. That's what I want. I want to make this brown just a little bit darker and see what happens. All right, I hope you guys are having fun experimenting with me. Um, I'm glad that you're here with us. Glad that you're safe and having fun. All right, so sure enough, it gave that cinnamon uh, a reddish tint which I was looking for. I'm gonna add a little bit of white glue just to extend the paint a little bit more because it's really thick right now. You can also use water. If you dip your brush in water, see it dripping there, then you can thin it out a little bit more and it will flow nicer. It won't be as thick. So I'm gonna add more water. All right. And I just have a lot of cinnamon up in this brush right now. So it's just, I have a lot of paint to work with right now. So I'm gonna start adding some shadow to this, to this drawing. All right, so I'm gonna start uh, here on the ridge of the nose and the ridge of the nose and the eye. And see how it's kind of a transparent layer Well, it's gonna dry and that transparent layer will look like a shadow. So I'm just adding shadow in places I think need it, like under the nose. 
and I can just kind of wipe it all the way over what I've painted because it's transparent. So don't be afraid to get in there and just kind of experiment. Don't be afraid to make mistakes, I guess this is what I should say, because mistakes is how we learn. Mistakes is how we learn. And uh, the more mistakes you make, the better you're going to be. And actually, that's the difference between the student and the master at anything. And, and the difference is the master has failed more times than the student has even attempted. So what does that mean? You have to put in your time. You have to put in your work. And that's how you get good. And that's how you develop ideas is through the momentum that you build while creating and discover through making mistakes. All right, so this face is coming along nicely. I am gonna switch up materials and I'm gonna use some more lipstick and I'm gonna come back to the makeup. I have this nice kind of purple lipstick here and I'm gonna use it to add some shadow to the eyes here. So I'm gonna come in here and add this nice little shadow here. And these will look like um, eyelashes almost. It's kind of cool. All right, I'm gonna shade the ears a little bit more. And soon I'm gonna make my way up to the top where the hair is, add some shadow below the chin and work my way up here to all these other colors that we used. And I feel like with all these other colors up here, I'm gonna to need to use a lot more colors. So I'm gonna to start to get crazy with some color. And here's a trick I wanna show you guys, a really cool brush trick. If you take half, if you have a big brush like this, or even a toothbrush, you can take your palette and let's say you wanna use, a, you wanna make a, a gradient. Um, well, what color should I use? I think I'm gonna use um, this really vibrant pink that I've been using on one side and notice how I'm using the only this side brush. This side over here is gonna be for the other color. So I'm only putting this angle of the brush if you can see just this edge on that side. Now, if I flip my brush, I'm gonna pick a new color and I really like the way this, uh, this blue looks. So I'm gonna rub this, this side of the brush and that blue. And I'm gonna get it in there nice and good. Notice how I'm only using this other end of the brush, rub it in there nice and good. And look, blue on one end, red on the other. And if you have to reload, well, you know what to do. You just turn your brush at an angle and fill it so that you have two colors. All right, so now I'm gonna come in here and let's see, I'm gonna add some hair, but I'm gonna do that crazy blend that I was telling you about. And if you go back and forth, you can see those colors start to blend together. You might have to reload. Mm -hmm. And now it's coming together. Ooh, look at that gradient. I love that. So I'm going to do that again. Reload my brush. One side is blue. The other is red. And in the middle, it creates a beautiful kind of purple. And if you want it to blend really seamlessly, then you kind of have to go slow and go back and forth a few times like that. All right, so I wish I had a, well, I do have a bigger brush. So let me try it with a bigger brush. All right, so I'm going to switch up my colors a little bit. I'm gonna use this gold because this gold is intriguing me. So one side of my brush, I'm loading up with the gold, nice and thick, really loaded up. And the other side I'm gonna do um, we'll do this purple. Gold and purple are nice royal colors together. 
So the other side I'm loading up. So I have purple and gold. Let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna do it uh, right over the top of this thing. I'm gonna start in the middle. I don't know why. I'm gonna wave it. Oh yeah. You guys see that coming through? I'm just kind of going with it and seeing what happens. I need to blend this. I kind of like the sh shadow. It. <laughs> I'm just gonna do a solid color. I need to fill in this pink. It's such a vibrant, beautiful color. There's a lot going on in her head because you can see all these crazy colors happening. I'm gonna use this silver and pink. I'm gonna make kind of a silver pink. And this is that body paint. This body paint, I think it's kind of an oil-based paint, so it'll take a while to dry. So just be aware of that. Um, any oil-based, anything with oil in it is gonna take a long time to dry. All right, I need darker colors in here. I need some more blues. So just be aware of that. The glue dries fairly quickly. There's still some wet areas in the thick parts, but for the most part, it, um, it stays, it dries fast. All right, a little bit of in here. Oh, this is kind of nice. It's white. And now these colors that I s did when I created these colors before, are gonna kind of show through a little bit, but that's kind of cool. I like seeing what happens. Everything that happens underneath will affect what you put over the top. There's even some black here. I need a little bit of black to define the form. Oh, that's actually, a Prussian green. Prussian green is very strong, very deep kind of a green. But that looks cool. Um, there is a black here, so let me rub that green into black. Sure. Um, it's, it's the background. I'm just going to blend some. Blue. Blue. Should I really tell them? I'm scrubbing my brush, and that will help blend those colors together. The more you go over the color back and forth, especially with a bigger brush, the, um, the better it will blend. So I'm gonna come over here. Should I do the same color on the other side? I'll do a slightly different color over here. I just added a little bit of white just to switch it up. I'm gonna do some more gold. Throw some gold in here just to blend in. Make it more interesting. Let's see. And a little more pink coming out the bottom just for a nice warm glow. Can you guys see that down there? And I'll do the same thing over here. I love the way these blend. I'll do some more up here. A little bit of yellow popping out. Yeah, that yellow extends the head a little bit. I need to extend it. Do a little bit of white. I'm just mixing colors intuitively. I have no plan. And that's exactly how my man David Cho works. He usually just goes and sees what happens and you just play around and experiment and cool things happen. Look at, that was a cool mark. Just sometimes it helps not to try. And just let the layers build up and see what happens. And if you don't like it, well, just keep painting and let it develop. All right, so we're having fun. I'm having fun. Hope you guys are too. And we're just gonna see where this goes. 
since we uh, kind of fell out a little bit, we're going to go over time just a little bit. Um, but we'll bring it back. And next time, hopefully, we won't have any more technical difficulties. So now I'm just spreading off the page. And I'm just allowing things to happen. I need a little more vibrancy in this face. The hair is really cool right now, but I need to come back to the face and kind of fix some things up there. Maybe that was not the right plan. So if you make a mistake, what can you do? You could just rub it in, wipe it, see what happens. Sometimes mistakes can be opportunities in disguise. So I'm gonna take this and blend it in the screen. Oh yeah, see already this is adding volume and texture to my face and creating movement and interest. All right. So take some of my darker cinnamon brown, do a little bit more shading. A little bit more shading here. The lips. All right, so we're adding little details now. I'm going back to my makeup. Just adding little shadows, details, highlights. It's coming out kind of cool. I definitely need to go back into the face a little bit. I think what I'm gonna do is add some more glue. And I'm just gonna pour it on and let the white of the glue do the work. I need a clean brush or you could use a sponge if you don't have a brush. And look, I'm adding a little bit of highlight with that glue. And that glue is acting like a glaze. It's gonna make a thin kind of light, transparent glaze for me to use for a highlight. And the more I build it up, the more noticeable it will be. So this glue is actually I love painting with supplies that aren't traditional art supplies. There's just, sometimes there's freedom and limitations. And when you have limitations, you're forced to be creative. So instead of being negative about mistakes or limitations or rules, learn to uh, work within those boundaries and see what you can discover because sometimes when you're forced to be creative you can end up inventing things that and creating things that will last the rest of your life and so those moments alone where it's just you and your work those are some of the most important times, important moments in your life because you're getting to know yourself. So this is kind of looking cool. I'm using this glue as paint for highlights. I'm blending it in. And it's ending up almost looking like some type of Wizard or I'm enjoying this where it's going. I'm adding a neck with the glue. I'm drawing with the glue. You can draw with the glue as well. You just gotta think outside the box. And you know what? That's what artists do. That's our job. Our job is to think different. And when you think different, then people will look to you for those ideas. And your unique way of thinking and seeing the world will help you affect those around you in a positive way. So stick to your craft, you know, stick to whatever it is that you love. That's the main thing. 
All right. So let's step back for a second. Let me add just a little bit more and we'll take a look at what we've done. It's important to step back from your work once you reach a certain point, whatever that point may be for you. But it's important to step back a little bit and view your work from a different angle. Stand up, stretch, go get a something to drink or, you know, just to get your mind off of what you've been doing. And then when you come back to it, you'll see it with fresh eyes. All right, so these highlights are getting built up nice. I'm trying to build it up thick on the nose. A little bit on the lips. And this will dry a little more clear, but the layer, the clear layer of glue will catch the light and it will act as a transparent highlight, which is great. And it'll also double as holding the turmeric paint in place, right? So let's step back. <clears throat> or for you guys, let's take a closer look and see what we got here. All right, and this started out as color swatches. And look what it ended up as. You can create anything as long as you have the will and the imagination. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this quarantine art lesson where we painted with spices, with glue, with makeup and who knows what we'll paint with next time. All right, so stay tuned. Join us next week, Wednesdays, every Wednesday at 4 p.m. And uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Oh wait, you can't, but you can subscribe. So do that and join us next week here on Jamaica Center for Arts and Learning. Bye-bye. <laughs>